Hi, this is question 4 of my series on applications of differentiation. So you have a very big question here, a nice question. Figure 1 shows an open container and it's in the shape of a triangular prism. I'm going to do quite a few of these triangular prisms today. The vertical ends ABE and DC F are identical isosceles triangles, angle ABE and angle BAE are 30 degrees each. The length of AD is 40 centimeters, as you can see in the diagram. Then they say the tank is filled in position with the open top ABCD horizontal. Water is poured into the tank at a constant rate of 200 cubic centimeters per second. The depth of water T after Filling starts is h centimeter, as you can see. So we are supposed to show that when the depth of water in the tank is h centimeter, the volume is given by this particular equation here. So there's a number of things that we need to establish. Let's first look at what we know. So if I have to highlight one important factor, maybe it will come in handy a bit later, is the constant rate that the water is poured into. And that is said to be um, 200 cubic centimeters per second. So just to bring that out, the volume with respect to per second with respect to the time is 200. Okay, and you get that from the from the from the from the units cubic centimeters volume and the seconds is the time. So the v dt is equal to that. Okay, later on, we'll be looking at something else. But okay, so let's look at what is necessary. So if I look at this part of this triangle, this angle here will also be 30 degrees. Okay, because the, it's a, it's a, I'm looking at that, at that blue triangle. So this is going to be x. This is going to be x plus an isosceles triangle. So if that is 30 and 30, together they give you 60, then this angle here should be 120. And I hope that you still remember from my isosceles triangles, okay, if you have an angle here, let's suppose I have my height, as is indicated, and this is 120, and that is x and that is x. I can actually calculate the area of that blue part. And I'm going to use the formula to calculate the area of that blue part of area equals to, let's say we put the half first. Now, you still remember from your previous work that we are going to look at that formula. So if I use x, I'm going to say a equals to half. In this case, it's x times x times the sine of 120 degrees. Now, the sine of 120 degrees, if you flip your calculator, and make sure your calculator is on degree mode, the sine of 120 degrees is square root of 3 upon 2. So, the area then is a half of x square times the square root of 3 over 2. Well, if you clean this up, the area is going to be... Um, square root of 3 over 4 x squared. That is the area of that part in blue. Okay, Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Something else that is worth mentioning, and that is when you look at the height of the rectangle. So if I bring my triangle again, and I will just draw another one underneath. So suppose I have my triangle. And from my previous work, it's a little bit drastic. So that's 30 degrees. Okay, that makes 90. So if I'm looking for the height, I'm going to use, remember I said this should be x for my previous diagram. And the formula I'm going to use is the sine of 30 degrees. is equal to h over x, but I'm not looking for x, I'm looking for h. So I'm going to then 
First, you calculate the sine of 30 degrees. That is a calculated value of a half. Okay? So that's a half. So this is a half equals to h over x. Right? So writing that in terms of h, that is going to be h is equal to a half of x. Okay? So therefore, I can also conclude that x equals to 2h, and this part is important to me because I'm going to use that part everywhere here in my previous one we have an x. Okay, so this here is the area of the blue part. Okay, but I'm going to write it in terms of h in order to show what the volume is equal to. Okay, right. So in order for me to do that, I just want to, to get my volume correct. So the volume of this is going to be this area that it has in blue. Right. So just my drawing is a little bit crooked, but you get the idea. So in order for us to determine the volume, it's going to be that area which uh, I've said it's going to be the area of a triangle, which the area of a triangle I have here as, I'm going to write it here, the volume will be the area of a triangle, which is root 3 over 4. But now, my x I'm going to write in terms of h. Okay? There's many ways you can do that. So my x is equal to 2h. So I'm going to substitute 2h there into this place here. Okay? So that's 2h. And multiply that by 40. The 40 comes from the length. All right? This length here, centimeters. Make sure always everything is in centimeters. Well, if you clean this up, it should give us what we are requiring to find. Okay? So if you clean this particular one, it's going to give you, and let me just make space, when I am trying to find the volume there, because you can always go back. So the volume would be, well, it's root 3 over 4 times 4h squared times 40, the 4 coming from 2 squared. Okay, so naturally, uh, the 4s cancel. Okay, so I have got volume equals to 40 root 3 over h square. And this was what we were supposed to prove. 40 root 3 over h square. Okay. So now I have my volume. And it's very important that you understand that. Okay. Also, I know dv dt is equal to 200. So let us just bring in what we know. We know that dv dt was 200. Okay. That was centimeter cubic centimeter per second, that's what we know. Okay, the volume in terms of the time. This is what we know. We also know that the volume is given by 40 root 3 h square. It's given by 40 root 3 h square. Okay, so we have got a few things that we need to do. The question says, find the rate at which h is increasing when h is equal to 5. So we are looking for the height may vary with respect to time. So what we are actually looking for is the h dt when h is equal to 5. We need to be able to determine what that is. Okay. Now, from this particular formula here that we have here on top, if we were to derive that formula here, if we were to derive this formula, it will be dv dh dv dh would be 80, okay, root 3h. We have that. We have dv dh, dv dt, but we're looking for dh dt. So we need to be able to use our chain rule. And our chain rule can be used in ways of saying, well, dh dt will equal to dv dt times dh dv. 
okay so very important that you are seeing the hdt here the hdt is if you look at what we have and the vdv up here that's the chain rule so we know that the vdt is equal to 200 so we know that this is equal to 200 but we don't know what the hdv is equal to and in order for us to find the hdv and that is very important okay i have here differentiated the vdh okay so if the vdh is equal to and let me just bring this here the v dh if that is equal to 80 root 3 over uh, over 1 obviously h there then what i'm requesting here what i'm supposed to find dh dv that's the reciprocal if you can see that so that means this is going to be nothing but 1 over 80 root 3 over h okay so that should be multiplied by 1 over 80 root 3 h okay so when we want h to be 5 we can just go ahead and plug that in there so you can say this is going to be 200 over 80 root 3 times 5 and we can see what we get when we are pulling out that value okay to find what will be our raid with the h dt the h dt that means we're not finding this the height in terms of time so our answer here should be centimeters per second that's what we're looking at all right so let us grab our calculators and work it out 200 divided by 80 times 5 times root 3 well we get about 0 0,2 and I'll give that to 3, 0 0.289. This is 0 0.289, give or take. Okay, so that's the rate at which uh, our height will vary with respect to the time. Find the rate at which age is increasing. It's increasing at 0 0.289 centimeters per second when the height is 5. Okay, so again, I hope that um, a few things at home, You, in order for you to be able to do this question, you had to remember quite a few things from trigonometry and stuff like that, and make sure that you do understand step by step how I managed to get to that, all right? When things are a little bit complicated, pause the tape, see what I do, rewind, and then you can get to solve this. There are many ways you can get to answer this question.